This is Akashwani. In the program Money Talk Now, we bring you a discussion on reasons and reforms behind the robust direct tax collections. The participants are Shishir Sinha, economic analyst, and S. Rangabhashyam, anchor. Uh, Shishir Sinha, a warm welcome to the program. Thank uh, you. The direct tax collections have been really robust, and uh, the net direct tax collections have risen by more than 11% to, you know, 3.80 lakh crore rupees. What would you say? Does it indicate a very clear cut uptick in the economy? If you talk about the first quarter direct tax collection number, which you pointed out was 3.80, 3.78 lakh crore between April 1 and June 17. In this figure, the most important one is the advanced tax collection number. Advanced tax collection for the first installment is something around 1.16 lakh crore or 1.17 lakh crore, which is showing a growth of 13.7%. What does it mean? When we say advanced tax collection is growing at 13% in the first installment, that means the companies are expecting very good profitability due during the rest of the year. Since the first advanced tax collection is the 15% of the total tax which you are expected to pay during the year. So 15% tax is showing a growth of 13%. So that is one very positive sign. The second thing is when the companies are expecting more profit. More profit will be expected only when there is a recovery in the economy. We have seen that the economic growth during the fourth quarter all the agencies were expecting very low growth during the fourth quarter of last fiscal. But uh, every estimate was completely taken off and we grew by something around 6.1% during the fourth quarter of last fiscal. Now, during the first quarter of this fiscal, if we go by the two GST collection number which we had in the month of April and in the month of May, which is in the range of 1.86 lakh crore and 1.6 lakh crore, these are showing that the demand is picking up. When the recovery is there, demand is picking up, companies are expecting better profitability. Agriculture sector is showing slightly improved growth. We are seeing demand not just in the urban area but in the rural area also. So combination of all those are being reflected in the advanced tax collection number as well as in the overall direct tax collection number. When we say direct tax collection, it means personal income tax and the corporate income tax. When the corporate income tax are rising, that means companies are expecting better profit. When the personal income tax is rising, that means the individuals are getting better salary hike. When the better salary hike is there, there will be a kind of virtuous cycle. That means they will go for more. That means when the people have higher salary or when they are getting more money in their hand, they will demand more. When they will demand more, companies will produce more. When the companies will produce more, they will provide more employment. More employment means more money in the hand. And this is a cycle which means one positive is resulting in the another positive. Positive. That is why these data are critical to gauge the next nine months, how these things will pan out. All the agencies are saying that we will have the normal monsoon. The growth rate we are expecting in the overall tax collection during the next nine months will be much better. Uh, Shishir, referring to the COVID impact, you know, 22-23 was a very clear cut year where there was almost negligible impact of COVID and this particular year 23-24 is going to be bright. With all the data coming in, whether it is of uh, GST or the GDP numbers or other numbers, would you say now that uh, emphatically we have moved on from the COVID years and uh, the economy is actually doing really well? Certainly, now that recovery has got a cement, what we normally use the term when the recovery is on a sustainable basis. Now, the real issue at this moment is how to accelerate it further. Because when we are talking about, say, $5 trillion economy, we have to move from, say, 6% or 7% growth to something around 8% or 8.5%. But at this moment, 6.5% is a realistic one because considering the geopolitical situation, considering the recession in Europe, considering the slowdown in the US and considering the geopolitical tension in some parts of the world, if we have a growth rate of 6% or 6.5%, that will be really good one. And that will also show that post-COVID, the recovery has got a sustainable momentum. That is very critical. We should not just jump from 6% to 8% or 8.5%. Even if you go by the sustainable of 6.5% for next 3 years, next 4 years, that will certainly be helpful for the Indian economy. And we should not forget that Indian economy or the growth rate of Indian economy is the fastest in the world at this moment. And the real issue is how to make advantage of what we call as the tailwind and how to defeat the headwind. 
And uh, Shishir, I'm sure you'll also agree that uh, the tax department, whether it is direct taxes or indirect taxes, they have made a number of reforms. They have come up with simplification of processes and forms and all those things. One of those aspects is the faceless assessment. So that uh, actually, you know, gives confidence to taxpayers that, you know, there won't be any bias against me. To what extent, you know, all these reforms and especially faceless assessment and filing of information has uh, also helped in proving the compliance, overall compliance. See, economic recovery is one thing. The most important thing is that when the people feel a some kind of I um, mean no trouble or people feel some kind of satisfaction in paying tax that will certainly boost the tax revenue you talked about the faceless assessment, assessment yes. now see if you can remember going to income tax department or getting a someone from income tax department was not a pleasant experience now if you don't have to face any income tax officer Everything is online. You just have to file the information online. You will get all the information online. That means you don't have to face that trouble kind of going to the income tax department and uh, facing a very harsh look of income tax official. All these things are now the things of past. Now, because of the faceless assessment, income tax and income tax assessee knows that if there is any problem in his return, he will get an online message and then he has to reply on the online thing. So, the assessment process has smoothened. The other thing is that when you are filing the income tax return, all the informations are pre-filled. You yes. just have to verify that whether the information provided in your pre-filled returns is correct, correct or not. The third thing is that when you are filing the income tax return, you don't have to wait for endless to get a refund or to get an assessment order or get a processing of the return, it will be within that particular time period, say 30 days or 45 days maximum, your entire income tax return exercise is over and you don't have to walk out from your room to fill the income tax form. So whether we talk about faceless assessment, whether we talk about pre-filled income tax return forms, all these have helped in compliance because we should remember that recovery is one aspect. How you facilitate the income Income tax payer is another important aspect. If you are able to provide comfort to income tax payer and if you say that if you pay the income tax, you will have certain kind of advantage or you will have some kind of mental peace. And if you are facilitating that kind of environment, the person will pay the tax. That is the real story behind the income tax collection growth. And Shishir, uh, let's also talk about the lower rates uh, of uh, income tax and corporate tax especially. It was lowered a couple of years back. Don't you think analysts have always been saying that when the taxes become lower, the compliance simply grows by leaps and bounds and people know that it's better to pay a lower tax and have peace of mind rather than to save on it and later on face compliance issues. One thing is very clear, tax evasion is now no more rewarding. That is one thing. Now we have two options, whether we should go for the older tax regime with all the exemption or whether we should go to the newer tax regime without any exemption. Since we are finding some kind of advantage in newer tax regime where the tax rates are lower because you are not taking any kind of exemption, exemption. people are moving to that. Of course, during the first two years, there was not much response because in India, we all know that most of the salaried people save. One of the region behind saving is the tax what you can say compulsory tax saving kind of thing. Now you are giving an option to the taxpayer that see you if you are getting an exemption you will have to pay this much tax. If you are not getting an exemption you will have to pay lower tax and if you are finding that not taking exemption is giving some kind of comfort. Other thing is you don't have to think about all the paperwork. Yes. When you are going into newer tax regime you don't have to think about collecting all the receipt all the documents for claiming the exemption. Of course we don't have to give those papers because it's an online system we don't have to give any paper considering the online mechanism we have income tax department has all the information there is a system called AIS which is the annual information system which is taking all the information what kind of yeah. automatically and when you are spending money or when you are putting some money in any kind of investment instrument income tax department getting all the information and you are also in a position to see what kind of information income tax department has so as an income taxpayer I know that what kind of information the income tax department has and even then if I am doing something wrong then nobody can save you. So that is the very critical
critical part that there is a transparent mechanism available. The assessee know, the income taxpayer know that what kind of information income tax department has. The income tax department knows how much money you have from where you are getting all the money and also where you are spending. So definitely there will not be any problem. And at the same time, when it is facilitating you to pay the tax and it is also telling you that if the tax liability is much less than what you have paid, then getting a refund is not that difficult now. So all those things are also helping in boosting the tax collection. Shishir, uh, you know, auto figures and lists say that, you know, are kind of a lead indicator of shape of things to come. So we have seen, especially in passenger vehicles and some of the segments of commercial vehicles, sales have really grown. Would you say that uh, entire corporate India, entire economy is doing well and auto uh, segment is giving an early signal of that? If you talk about the manufacturing sector, 40% of that comes from the automobile sector. And automobile sector will survive only when people are buying cars, when people are buying two-wheelers, when people are going for the three-wheelers. And of course, the commercial vehicle sales are there. What we have seen that uh, during 2022-23, in rural area, we saw some kind of slump in two-wheelers demand. Of course, the reasons were obvious because of lower money realization in the rural area. There were some kind of problems. So people were not buying that. Now we are seeing that two-wheeler sales have really started picking. Up. At the same time, we are also seeing that the high-end vehicles are being sold in a large number. So people are buying higher-end cars, people are also buying two-wheelers. So that means each and every segment of automobile market is giving sales figure, which will certainly help the government to know that whether people who are tax assessee or who are the taxpayer or even who are not the taxpayer, but has the potential to become the taxpayer, they can track those people. So automobile sector also helps the government to know that whether the taxpayers are paying the tax in a proper manner or not, and who are the potential taxpayer, because please remember when you are going to buy two wheelers you have to submit your plan. Let's also discuss the flip side, all that's happening. We have talked about the macroeconomic fundamentals being really strong, GDP numbers, the interest rates are really stable at this juncture, oil prices have come down a lot, fairly good forex reserve close to $600 billion with the Reserve Bank of India. All in all, really rosy and uh, really good. What all do you think could play spoil sport moving ahead in the next you know, six months to a year? What are the threats to this party being spoiled? Two things. One is, of course, the monsoon, because we all know that uh, because of this uh, El Nino, we are apprehending some kind of impact on the monsoon. Of course, all the weather agencies have said that there will be normal monsoon, but this apprehension cannot be ruled out completely that there may not be an impact on the monsoon. If the monsoon is impacted, that means our agriculture will be affected. And since the 65% of population and 50% of labor force depend on agriculture, so any unexpected event in agriculture sector will have the entire impact on the overall economy. The other thing which is going to be or which we should keep in mind is the geopolitical situation, especially what kind of economic activities we are going to see in Europe or in US. Because when we talk about export, we need to think about what kind of economic situation we have because when we are selling some goods to someone, yes. whether that country has the potential or whether that company is really in a position to buy our right. goods or not. If the export is affected, that means our manufacturing sector will be affected, our job situation will be affected. That This is number two. And one more thing is the crude oil prices. Of course, at this moment, we are not seeing that much jump in the crude oil prices. But if they go on cutting the crude oil production just to have more and more realization from their production, then that will have some impact on that. And we should not forget that since May 22, 2022, we have not seen any revision in the petrol and diesel prices. But if there is any revision, it will have a multiplier effect on overall prices. So that is the third element. So one is the monsoon. The second one is, of course, the geopolitical situation. And especially when I'm talking about the economic situation in Europe and US. And third one is the crude oil prices. Shashir, let's hope that uh, these uh, robust uh, direct tax collections actually translate uh, in a huge growth for uh, the GDP of the country. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on reasons and reforms behind the robust direct tax collections. The participants were Shishir Sinha, economic analyst and S. Rangabhashyam, anchor. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, 
news on AIR official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 9289094044.